you to bring us to assistance in Christ. This evening, Mass is a celebration of life, a celebration of two special people who have gone before us. And today we celebrate the life of our dear brother, Akash Anthony, and our dear brother, Francis Lawrence Anthony. And to begin this evening's celebration, we have a procession to the church. And this is led by Father Verivan, Father Ephraim, Father Matthew, and our main celebrant for this evening, Father Benedict Francis. I welcome you, dear brothers and sisters, to join us in the entrance in Amazing Grace. So good evening, dear brothers and sisters, friends and family. On behalf of Mum Susan, Sneha and Mario, I extend you all a warm welcome to this Eucharistic celebration to commemorate the precious memories of Wensi and Akash. Wensi was like a godfather for all and every institution or group of people. All felt as though he knew us all since our birth. He had the lovely charm of knowing the people well. Akash was the carbon copy of Wensi, except that he had his own dynamic humor and sense of love. Both had the magic of touching the hearts of people. Today, we celebrate the first anniversary of uh, Akash, and on the 23rd, the fourth anniversary of Wensi. Let us remember them for the joy that they gave all of us and pray for Mum Susan, Sneha and Mario for the strength and consolation from God, our Good Shepherd. I ask Roy Menages and Swetama Men to bring forward the portraits of Wensi and Akash.
May I now invite the close friends of uh, Wensi, Mr. Baldilan, and uh, later after Baldilan, Mr. Venkatraman, to share their tributes, after which the Mass will begin. Thank you so much. Thank you, Father Valerie. Uh, first of all, uh, on behalf of the family, uh, Susan, Sneha, and Mario, I would like to welcome each one of you, uh, despite the challenges of the weather and the traffic. Uh, you have come here to uh, celebrate and share the memories of uh, dear Vinceless and our uh, beloved Akash. As you all know that uh, Susan, Sneha, and Mario are in um, Sydney, and uh, I'm sure they can see us through technology, and we also acknowledge uh, their presence uh, amongst all of us uh, here today. Time has really flown by, and uh, when we do the sums, it's been four years uh, since Wenceslas uh, left this world and uh, has become one with God. And the very, very unexpected uh, and I would say still very, very raw. Uh, the uh, incident, uh, the loss we faced with Akash, that also has been a year now. And this is what I say, uh, whether it's the beauty uh, or the travesty of time, that time uh, continues to chug along and we continue to nurse uh, some of the wounds which are deep uh, in our hearts. Just coming here talking to a few others uh, reminded me once again of uh, Wenceslas's very different uh, thinking and personality. And a long time ago, when I was uh, young and brash, I probably did not fully understand and appreciate, uh, because we all don't know what we don't know. But Wensi uh, knew a lot more uh, than uh, many of us, but definitely a lot more than me. And that was his unflinching desire, propensity to go and reach out to people he had never even met or even seen, whereas we normal human beings, we would find it slightly difficult to go and engage with somebody who we've never met or never seen. But when he had that God-given gift and the power where he could go and engage with anyone. And it was not for any of his own work or anything, you know. He would go and engage with people and ask about their well-being. So that was in today's uh, fast-paced world where we are all worried about our own and our family's well-being. Very few people uh, come to my mind who have that thing in their heart and the God gift for the other person also to engage with them and not for any personal uh, selfish or any other reason but just purely to know about the well-being of the person and a real life example was today, standing outside when I was talking to Dr. Rajan Prasad. So he mentioned to me about his 97 year old mother. And whenever Vinci visited him, he would make a point, go and spend time. 
and talk to her or engage with her. And that was, uh, you know, with young and old. And in my own house, when he'll come, so he would come and engage with my children also. And on the streets, uh, even uh, in, uh, I would say, elevators, when we are going up seven or eight stories in a building, and I would be getting ready to talk about the meeting at hand we would have to have, but he'll be very keen to talk to the young fellow or the young lady and talk to them and uh, you know, give them a sense of calmness. He, he definitely around him had an aura uh, of serenity, godlike serenity, I would say, and godlike calmness. And then I realized that maybe these other young people in the same elevator with us who were going up, maybe they had an interview, maybe they had a big contract to, or they had a presentation to make. And his very slight conversation with them might have calmed down their uh, nerves and maybe help them get the job or maybe help, help them get the... So these are the unseen, unfelt uh, help and assistance uh, which uh, Vinci uh, had the, I would uh, term that as a God-given gift uh, in him and which he passed on to all the, uh, you know, people around him. And we miss him uh, for all of this, uh, and definitely the void he has left uh, in his uh, close family, uh, wider family, and the entire church community, the country, all the you know, organizations uh, he was involved with, and we really miss that spark and that enthusiasm uh, which he brought to the table. And then uh, we look at both countries, so it was not just, and I would say even three countries, uh, which was uh, India, uh, New Zealand, and even uh, Sri Lanka. So he was a very, very a rare uh, human being. Uh, who was loved, respected dearly by one and all, and at every echelon of the society, right from the prime minister of the country down to the unknown soul uh, traveling with him in that uh, elevator, the story I just spoke about. So these type of gifted human beings uh, leave a lasting impression in our lives. And we always uh, look at them uh, and continually learn from them and continually unlearn some of the things uh, which we might have voluntary or involuntary picked up in our worldly lives and then unlearn those things and learn the, you know, the good things which we see in such personalities. So I can go on and on, uh, but I know uh, time is short and uh, we have to carry on with our proceedings. Akash, I vividly remember, I think, 48 hours before he took the flight to Brisbane, he came to see me around 3.30, uh, 4 o'clock uh, at my office. And that was visit was preceded by a call from Susan also. So she gave me a slight background uh, and about his uh, return back to Brisbane and join his flying. And I had a very general, nice conversation and a cup of coffee. Um, and I was, I remember I was slightly busy in a few other things, so I told him, don't mind, let me carry on. But nowhere did I ever thought that that was the last day uh, we would be seeing him. 
he had his challenges like each one of us have. Uh, so one of the learnings from this is that if we have any loved one with any uh, challenge, uh, let's reach out. But then again, who are we uh, when God has already decided what has to happen? This is our uh, worldly human beings when we start overanalyzing things. Uh, and we all live in uh, God's wish and what God decides. Uh, we don't have even an iota of power to change anything in his wish. Uh, it was a very young life lost, as Father Valerian also said, that he was a carbon uh, copy of uh, Wincy. He had all those soft human being traits, which when he was well known, uh, we could see that in Akash. And we could really, I really saw him step up uh, when he was uh, overseas. He had to come from overseas uh, when Vincey passed away. And I could really see a very fine young gentleman shaping up the way he handled the entire family. So um, that gave us a lot of uh, confidence uh, about how he was shaping up and that we have a young gentleman who would now take over the reins of the family and look after the family. But less did we know that he is also going to, uh, he's more needed uh, in the house of God than here. Let's all pray that uh, the family has the continuing power and support from the Almighty to bear this loss. Uh, Susan, Sneha, and Mario. And uh, let's pray from the bottom of our hearts to God to give them all the strength and peace that God might wish for them. Thank you. I would request now Venkat Raman to come and say a few words. Thanks. Reverend Fathers, Susan, Sneha, and Mario across the Tasman. I've often, often said that sleep is short death and death is long sleep. Four years ago, on this day, Wenceslaus was alive and he was bubbling with joy because he was closer to achieving what he wanted to in his lifetime of visiting the Holy Land. There have been a couple of people from here, Jeffrey, for instance, Vanessa, who accompanied him to Holy Land, a visit which he could not make three times prior. But little did we know that we would not be seeing him thereafter because he went to Chennai and after that he succumbed to a sudden bout of illness. Death, we always see as an entropy that postulates absence of energy. But we imponderable mortals do not understand that death is a process of life, and life itself is evolving in the cycle of death and recurrence. I could go on for a long time about Vince's loss, since our family, both the families have known to each other for more, almost 50 years. I came into this world almost nine years before he did, but we came into this country almost at the same time, 22 years ago. And since then, 
a bond grew even stronger than what it was in Chennai and in other parts of Tamil Nadu. None of us would know what kind of a businessman Wenceslas was because all of us saw him only as a human being, as a person, as a social scientist, as a person who interacted with almost everyone he met, be it a person who is old, rich, poor, aged, or young. That was a special characteristic that Wenceslas had, which drew him closer to people. I also want to make a little note about his contribution to the church and also to social and community welfare, a number of projects in which he was involved. In Vince's loss, we lost a very dear friend. I lost a younger brother, and many of you have lost a good friend. He'll continue to remain in our arts, and as far as we are concerned, the little organization that I work, we keep his name alive by recognizing his name in two of our awards twice a year so that people who receive those awards will understand and appreciate what this great man stood for and remember and cherish the memories of Wenceslas Antony. As for Akash, he always appealed to me almost like a grandson. I've spent a number of evenings, hours, and we flew together for the first anniversary of Wenceslas's death. And at the, that 15 or 18 hours that I spent with him, I was confident that he would come back and continue as a son of the true father. But unfortunately, nature took its course Destiny had its way, and we've lost when, uh, Akash just a, on this day a year ago. Death has its own ways of punishing people, but all we can do is to remember people in their good times. My feelings, of, including that of my family, are with Susan, Sneha, and Mario. But in what we, we can do to strengthen the memory of people like Wenceslas and Akash is to continue to love, continue to serve, which is why we founded what was called the St. Mother Teresa Interfaith Committee to bring together various communities once a year, and we, which we continue to do until last year before COVID took over. All I can say now is that let's continue to pray. Let's continue to spread the love and the joy that Wenceslas and Akash, as father and son, brought to this world, brought to this society. God bless all of us. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Well, we are here to honor them and celebrate this Mass uh, for uh, Akash and Venselas. So let us then, as human beings, we are not perfect. We have own shortcomings. Uh, let's make ourselves worthy of celebrating this mystery of Christ's love and his presence among us in the Eucharist calling to mind our failings and our sins and seek God's forgiveness and healing. God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, 
and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant we pray, O Lord, through the blessed passion of your Son, that your servants, Wensi and Akash, may receive the forgiveness for their sins, and as they always desire, so that knowing you in truth, they may be worthy to rejoice at being called to behold you forever. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Now the Lord of armies will prepare a lavish banquet for all peoples on this mountain, a banquet of aged wine, choice pieces of marrow, and refined aged wine. And on this mountain, he will destroy the covering which is over all peoples a veil which is stretched over all nations. He will swallow up death over all nations. He will swallow up death for all time, and the Lord God will wipe tears away from all faces, and he will remove the disgrace of his people from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken, and it will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God for whom we have waited that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let's rejoice and be glad in his salvation. 
for the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your response is, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path for the sake of his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's house shall I dwell forever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the first book of Corinthians. But the fact is, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who are asleep. For since by a man death came, by a man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all will be made new but each in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, after that, those who are Christ at his coming. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown a perishable body. It is raised an imperishable body. For this perishable must put on the imperishable and this mortal must put on immortality. But when this perishable puts on the imperishable, and this mortal puts on immortality, then will come about the saying that is written, death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he found Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away. And many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, he went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Who believes in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My sisters and brothers, I hope we are all well, enjoying life with the family and friends, having quality time with everyone, and especially at this time of school holidays. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus was a friend of the family of Lazarus and his two sisters, Martha and Mary. And looks, Jesus had enjoyed the hospitality every time he went up to the Jerusalem temple to pray every year. And Lazarus becomes sick. Word is sent that Jesus may come. And deliberately, Jesus delays his departure to go to Bethany. Meanwhile, Lazarus is dead. And Jesus reaches, but before he embarks on his journey, he says, this illness will end in giving glory to God. The death of Lazarus will be for the glory of God. And Jesus and his companions reached Bethany, and Martha asked this question, which I believe today Sneha may be asking, probably she asked, Lord, if you were here, my brother Agash would not have died. And if we continue with the same gospel, in verse 32, Mary asks the same question. If you are here, my brother would not have died. Probably, Susan may be saying the same thing at the four after that beautiful pilgrimage to the Holy Land, and having time with family and friends, I could just feel it was so long awaited and a very profound God experience. And coming back straight to hospital, and the morning we prayed for Wednesday, probably a saying the same thing, Lord, if you were there, my brother, my husband, my friend would not have died. And yet, it is good to reflect on this statement, if you are here, a sense of profound disappointment, a disappointment that the friend in need, Jesus was not there for them when they needed. 
At the same time, this disappointment is a positive tone in saying that, yes, we believe that you have, we have the faith to say that you have the capacity to heal Lazarus. And even now, Martha goes on to say, even now it's possible for you to do something about it. Now we know that Jesus eventually raised up Lazarus from the dead. You and me, Sneha and Susan, may be saying it is very good for Mary and Martha because they got their brother alive afterwards. But for me, I'm still grieving. I'm still grieving the loss of my brother. I'm still grieving the loss of my dad, my brother, my son. Very wonderful for them, for, you know, Martha and Mary, what about me? It is here, brothers and sisters, that we want to journey with Mary and Martha, believing the words of Jesus. The first reading from Prophet Isaiah speaks about the eschatological time, the messianic time that God prepared for this beautiful mountain a sumptuous meal, a very delicious meal prepared for us. And it says, on this mountain, you will enjoy this company, you will enjoy the friendship with God, and death will be destroyed once and for all. The veil that prevents us from seeing God will be removed. The veil that prevents one from seeing God is the veil of religious kind of unbelief. That through our faith in Jesus, through our faith in the divine plan of God, the veil will be removed and we will see the glory of God and God face to face. And the second reading, we're told that in the person of Jesus Christ, through his resurrection from the dead, the first fruits, the first fruit, Jesus' resurrection is a guarantee that we too will rise again. So our faith gives way to the promises of resurrection. Now, when we talk about his resurrection, let us look at Jesus. Let's go to the his baptism. Jesus was baptized in the River Jordan, and he was told the people were told, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. Beautiful indeed. And then in transfiguration, Jesus took his inner circle, James, John, Peter, went up the mountain. There he was transfigured. His face became like dazzling white. And then again he heard a voice, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. Life goes on for Jesus. At the last moment, he is on the cross, dying. And there he makes a prayer. Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? This father who said to the world, told the son, you are my beloved son, listen to him. When the son needed the father, he looked, the father was away. Jesus died. He died so that you and me may have life eternal. That death was necessary in the plan of God for the eternal redemption of the world. That death was necessary, that through the death of Jesus, you and me have life eternal. Now through this dialogue, 
and through the life of Lazarus, through the life of Akash, through the life of Venceslaus, and the dear and near ones of everyone whom we mourn for, Jesus is telling us this ultimate truth, that he will take us through beyond death, but not from death. He will take us through beyond death to life eternal and not from death. Just like God the Father did not allow the temptation to overcome. And he had to die, Jesus had to die. So we believe in the words of Jesus and we open our hearts to accept in faith that through death we are life eternal. Now Jesus says everyone who believes this has eternal life, believes, referring to you and me living in this world, struggling with many things. That our faith in Jesus and the promises of Jesus that you and me are created to live and not to die. That's a mystery. You and I are created to live and not to die. And Jesus gives us eternal life. In Psalm we read, what's life? Life is 70 years. And most of these are emptiness and pain. That's it. But it is life that we live here. A beautifully lived life with its ups and downs, pain and agony, joy and hopes and aspirations and longings, that will determine because we are a people of faith. And I believe that's what I could see from Venceslaus and that's what I could see in Agash as well. Profound faith. Faith in God that God will live and bring everything to its completion for the glory of God. And in faith, in faith, which is a gift of God, we humble ourselves and surrender our life to God that God may receive glory. And God's glory is our life. God's glory is our eternal life. God's glory is a profound faith when we are faced with unanswerable questions that enables us to believe that Jesus will keep the promises and will take us beyond death, through death, but not from death. May our friendship May our sense of belonging to community believers, may our family from where we draw strength and support and companionship and that family that helps us be what we are, guided by the love of God, guidance of the Holy Spirit, give us a strength to live each day of our life for the glory of God. And we submit ourselves, asking God to help us that we really reflect the glory of God through the quality of our life, through our faults and failures, and again, through a profound faith in the plan of God. God bless. Okay, we profess our faith together as one family and say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten from the Father, through him all things were made, 
was and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified and Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Catholic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. And trusting in the goodness and mercy of God, now we now bring before the Lord our prayers and petitions. Dear Lord, we lift up our Holy Father, Pope Francis, all bishops, priests, and religious and the faithful to be strengthened by your love and healing during this pandemic all over the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for the precious gift of life to our dear and beloved Akash, who so generously touched each and every one he met with your love and made everyone feel special, and he still remains in our hearts and prayers. May he find eternal rest in your love and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for vocations to the priesthood and religious life that our youth may welcome God's call and prepare themselves for a life of service in the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we implore you to strengthen, console and comfort Susan, Sneha and Mario and the rest of their family and all the families who have lost their loved ones in the past year with your loving and healing touch. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we bring to you all children, youth, young adults, married couples and elders to experience your loving healing of all their physical, emotional and spiritual pains and to be strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray that our, our dear brother Wenceslaus Anthony, Akash, and all the other deceased members of his family may enjoy your eternal love, peace, and rest in your heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for all those present here that we may experience God's love and the abundant riches of his mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Can you be seated? i 
Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, good of all his holy church. We humbly offer you sacrifice, O Lord, for Vancy and Akash, your servants, that they who, by your gift of the light of faith, already knew you, may rejoice in holding fast to you forever, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Up your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. In him, the hope of the blessed resurrection has dawned that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful, Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so, with angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your glory as we thought end, we acclaim. The font of all holiness, make holy. Therefore, the gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith For as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks 
that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope Patrick and Michael, our bishops, and all the clergy, religious, and the entire people, and the faithful assembled here today. Remember your servants, Wensi and Akash, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your son in the death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Join in praying together the prayer Jesus taught us. Please stand. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say your word, my soul shall be healed.
Uh, well, friend, just a reminder to all of you, I know that you've been here before in this situation. Those who are Catholic would come forward to receive communion, all those who are not. And if you still like to receive a blessing from the priest, you're most welcome. Just come forward and cross yourself this way or this way. The priest will understand you're seeking a blessing. Thank you. Precious Lord, shake my hand, lead me on, help me stand, I am tired.
Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the souls of your servants, Wensi and Akash, for whom we have offered this sacrifice to your majesty, may, by your power of the sacrament, receive from your mercy the happiness of perpetual light. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, we have a, a few people who would like to give tributes in person. May I ask uh, Barry Roland to come forward? Dear friends, Auntie, Sneha, Mario, and members of the clergy. My name is Barrington Roland, and I've been privileged to have coached Akash along his cricket journey for about 13 years ago when I first came to New Zealand. I'm also really fortunate to have got to know Uncle, and as we grew stronger as friends, he mentored me along the way. Uh, today we have come here to celebrate their memories. And for me, it's the celebration of the legacy that they left behind for us. I'm going to start with Uncle because uh, the first, one of the first things that happened, like a lot of people, he, as we spoke earlier, he, he touched a lot of souls. And I think it, it was because of him that I actually remained in New Zealand. He, during one of my tough times when I was thinking of going back, he guided me, encouraged me to hang in there. He took me to a chapel and asked me to sit down with him and pray. And I think that really turned a lot of things for me that day. And I, would, I will never forget that. Uncle always had that smile and that cheekiness about him and he always found humor in every situation. So it's, it's always lovely. Whenever I think of him, I always, it always brings a smile to my face. And as, you know, something as a cricket coach, that's something I will always take with me as a coach to make sure my students smile and are happy first before trying to teach them anything. And I thank you, Uncle, for that little gift that you gave me. Akash, the first time I met him, I was coaching in New Zealand and a lot of the kids are, as we all know, are pretty are brats. They all uh, make fun of the coach, especially when they come from India and they can't, you know, they don't have an accent and they speak weirdly. Um, but Akash was just such a different kid. He referred me to as, as Barry Anna. And I was like, where has this kid come from? And he was so respectful. And he always, he always had those questions about he was really curious about everything and we would always spend hours after cricket sessions just art talking about cricket and all about the technique and he would grill me and I, I didn't even know much I was just starting out my journey but I would but he challenged me as a as a as a coach which really um, which brought us really close together uh, Akash actually I don't know how many of you know but like he had the potential to play big cricket he the, one of the big moments that I would love to share with everyone is when there was a Western District Under-17 tournament and our team had a lot of stars in the team and we were, the team was nine down and they had a whole day of cricket to play the next day and only Akash and another little boy uh, were, were remaining. So they are, we assumed we we're going to lose the match pretty quickly and everyone's going to go home. Akash and, and that boy went on to bat for, I think, about 50 overs together and tried to deny that other team victory, which was amazing at that age to do so. 
And his quiet determination, his quiet belief in himself, and he always had that ability to be really strong when everything around him was, was kind of like falling apart. And that boy who was batted with him it, it now plays for Canterbury in uh, provincial cricket. And we, uh, we spoke the other day, and he remembers fondly that partnership they two had. And he remembers the determination Akash had, and he told him, don't worry, I'll, I'll bat with you the whole day. And it's amazing what they both did, which, which that boy still remembers. And it was a tribute and testimony to Akash's uh, resolve when he played cricket. Um, when another thing about Akash was he was a really talented leg spin bowler. And he was so enthusiastic about it that he would go to the White Acre cricket nets and practice for hours by himself. And I think um, it's lovely to see that in, in a student when they have that passion, when they want to really work hard and try their best. And I love that enthusiasm about Akash. And, and I think if he did, as I said, you know, if he never really focused, if he went after his dream of being a pilot, he could have actually played some really good cricket. Again, coming back to the legacy that Akash has left in the cricketing fraternity and also in my heart, I still coach at the same venue where Akash uh, used to train. And I will never, I will always still remember in my heart his style and his way he played the game. And he was always a very elegant cricketer um, and played it like a real purist. So I'm so lucky that you know, I can look back with fondness and joy, and I will always remember those images of him batting and laughing and always asking me those questions and his curiosity. So I would just like to finish by saying thank you for, you know, all the memories. Thank you, and thank you so much for the, the learnings. I think I've grown over the last year as well to open up my mind towards communication more personally as well as as well as to my students um, and I think that's a that's the legacy that uh, both of them have left for us auntie I uh, thank you so much for being a guide being a mentor to me as well I'm still going to keep coming and having and enjoying fish with you um, for lunches and you have to listen to all my stories that I have about my coaching and, and Sneha and Mario as well. Um, hopefully I'll see you one day in, in Australia, but my prayers are with you all. I know this has been a real hard journey for, for all of you and for family members and loved ones. And my prayers are with all of you. We all will, will always have a great memory of Akash and, and uncle. And thank you so much. God bless. Good evening, everyone. Uh, most of you may not uh, know me. My name is Devik, uh, and I've uh, been a friend of Akash's for about the past uh, four to five years. Uh, we're all here to pay respects to someone we loved and cared about, and yes, we are still sad and trying to heal from the loss of such an amazing person. But let us not forget the me amazing memories that Akash has left behind for us and re remember him with those. There was something that I had written for Akash last year and shared uh, on social media after his passing. And it was something that I held very dearly to me and I do want to share the same thing verbally. Um, it was something that took a long time for me to write. Um, and it just encapsulates what I think of him and what uh, he means to me as a friend and as a younger brother. Words cannot express how broken hearted and sad I am when I heard the news of you, that you won't be here with us anymore but you will still be here with us in spirit. I still remember how amazed I was when I first met you. Your upbeat attitude, your laughter, your piercing green eyes and your mini afro, and every time we'd meet each other, hey bro, how's it going? <laughs> and you were always just so full of life. That's something that I always miss still to this day. 
From chatting to you on Messenger and to our coffee catch-ups, it was an absolute pleasure and blessing to get to know you these past few years. I don't know if most of you know, or most of his friends will probably know, Akash had a very different way of messaging. I would land from wherever I was, my phone was on flight mode, and uh, I'd turn it off flight mode, and it's either in my pocket or sitting somewhere, and I kid you not, it was just bing, 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 or vibrates the whole time, and I'm like, ooh, I feel really popular today, like, I wonder who's messaging me. Definitely can't be my wife, because, you know, she has enough of me at home. So I'm like, oh, cool, let's have a look. Open my phone, and Akash has sent you 20 messages. And it's not like, you know, it's, 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 hey, how are you? What are you up to today? And each message would be something different after different. It's just, you know, his way of communicating. And I'll be honest, it is something that I really, really miss nowadays. Um, it hit me pretty close to home when, you know, we were going through our messages and things like that, that this will never happen again to me. Um, and, you know, I would normally just say, write a huge paragraph, and his reply to that paragraph would be 20, 25 messages back to back to back to back. I and mean, that just showed his enthusiasm to me. We would talk about cricket, as Barry mentioned before me, flying, and life in general. He was very mature beyond his years. Um, I still remember him trying to help me out uh, when I was looking for a flying job in Tonga, and he was already there. And we had talked about how we would live together if I got the job. Um, and you know, even though he was four years younger than me, he was much more ahead in life than I would have imagined um, for someone that young. We stayed in touch, you know, we tried to help each other achieve our goals, and he was always supportive and positive, and really did help me through all that time. However, life had other plans for me, and somehow I ended up staying here in New Zealand. And then the table slightly turned, and we were working on bringing him back home to New Zealand, and I remember telling him to use the motivation of coming back home to Sousa 90 as his motivation and inspiration to, you know, get a job within New Zealand, so that he could help look after her. We encourage each other to strive for the best and achieve our best in life. I was so, so proud when he called me and told me the news that he got into Air New Zealand. We had worked on this for a good eight to nine months, you know, the interview process, preparing him for the sim, et cetera, et cetera. Flying also was his life outside of cricket. It was a, one of the best memories I have of Akash, just that phone call um, and how happy he was and how happy I was um, to share the, in that moment with him. You were so at peace with that news that you could finally come home. And we were all so proud of your achievement. You persevered and did not give up. You worked so hard and ensured that you had left no stone unturned. You were so motivated and inspired that it had a big impact on me as well. We would talk about how we would work together someday. You know, either me being his captain or he being my captain, since he was a bit more experienced than I was when I got into my flying career. Even Himali, my wife, and my family were so pleased that she got in. I still remember Himali telling me that she couldn't wait for him to be her pilot, my wife's a flight attendant, um, by the way, and to share that cabin with him, you know, as, 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 his, uh, as him being a pilot and she being the flight attendant. And that brought us so much joy. My dad fondly remembers his last conversation with you, and he said that now you've got the job, we can all go out for dinner and celebrate together as a family. You're an inspiration to all of us, my brother. I wish there was more we could have done, to you, done for you. I'm sorry that the world failed you. You were too good for it. We want you here more than anything in the world, but it seems to us that God wanted you more. I'm proud to call you my brother. I have no doubt that you are now flying higher than ever before. Please continue to watch over us from the highest seat in the house, and as you are now the captain of all our lives. You have left a big hole down here, and there's nothing that can fill that void. I hope you're at peace and all your suffering has ended. We will see you again, and when we do meet, it will be like nothing has ever changed. We will talk about flying, we will talk about cricket, and life in general. Love you with all my heart, my brother, and we will forever miss you. To Susan Auntie, Sneha Didi, and Akaj Bhaiya, we pray and hope with you every day, and we hope that you find peace as well. And if there's anything that you ever need, we will always, always be here for you. Please don't ever hesitate to ask. 
Love always from myself, Hamali, and the rest of the Raj family, and I'm sure from all your brothers and all your sisters from around the world. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Simi. It's an honor and privilege for me today to pay my tribute to Akash. Even in his passing, Akash gave me the gift of a sister, a mother, and another brother in Mario. Um, words are never enough for me to ever talk about Akash or his memories. So here's a poem, and it's called Without Akash. Life without you is like a book without words, a sheep without wool, a sky without blue. Life without you is like a plant without leaves, a violin without strings, a ship without a crew. Life without you is like a forest without trees, a sea without waves, and a window without a view. All my love goes to Sneha and Susan Auntie and Mario and Akash will always be here through his memories, through his words, through his imitations, and through his mom and his sister. That's all I have, thank you. Hi guys, uh, I'm Gaurav. Uh, a lot of you guys know me uh, as Akash's friend. If you guys are watching this video, um, you know, you're one of those people that Akash has touched uh, really deeply. Um, I feel blessed and privileged to have had him as a friend, and I still, to be honest, have him, have him in my heart. I think about him quite a lot, and I, I talk to Priyal about it um, at all times, and Sneha as well. So I just, I just, um, I was telling Priyal the last memory that I had of Akash uh, was when he came to Sydney in earlier, uh, I think 2020, and we went for a bowling session. And uh, he knows that we're very competitive every time we do bowling or we play cricket or we play table tennis. Um, and we, we had a bowling session and he beat me by 10 points and he came home running and, and going, Priyal, ask God of what happened bowling today. Um, so I, I really miss the banter. I, I really just miss his presence around me. Such a positive guy. Um, if you guys had the chance to know him, uh, you know deeply, I'm sure you guys would agree with me that he's one of the best souls you would have ever met. But you know, it's it is sad to what's happened. But I always encourage myself, uh, you know, to think about all the good times I've had with him because there's so many, uh, and and I think I can always cherish and remember him that way. So um, I would like to finish off the, you know, the conversation just how Akash always does it by saying, God bless you. Hi everyone, I'm Jeet, one of Akash's friends from school, the mighty Avondale College. Unfortunately, I can't be there in person today, but here's a little message for everybody. Akash and I met at Avondale College in 2007, and we immediately bonded through our passion for cricket. He was an amazing cricketer, beautiful leg spinner and a classical top order batsman who wanted to be like Rahul Dravid. We could spend hours talking about cricket and our conversations could go on forever. Yes, he was an amazing cricketer, but he was also an even better person. When I think of Akash, I think of as someone who was full of joy, full of positivity and a cheerful personality. He was always someone I could open up to and he always had the most honest opinions. No matter what the issue I was facing at the time, 
I always knew that a conversation with Akash would solve, would always solve the problem. Today, we celebrate his life and the memories we have with him. Although I'm sad he's no longer with us, I'm happy to know that there's a room full of people out there who he had positive impact on. I will forever cherish his smile and the good memories I have of him. I'm sending my prayers and positive thoughts to his family and friends today and praying that his soul has found peace. Thank you, everyone. Rest easy, my buddy. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to pay. It has been one year since you decided to leave everything behind and be with our Heavenly Father. I don't know where or when or how to begin. I'm so numb. And I don't know how to put my words together. We were not ready to say goodbye. Even though we know for sure it is a part of life. Death may have taken you away from us, but it will never take away the memories that you left behind. Our hearts are heavy for losing someone so special. But as we mourn your death, we celebrate your life in heaven. As the priest once said at your funeral, you left to become a pilot in heaven. As they have an aeroplane, but with no pilot. Thank you for every little thing you have done for me so far. And meeting your family was the best part. Akash, you have been a great person. And you taught us the best lesson in life is that we never stop dreaming and believing in ourselves. Thank you for the love you have given me and my family during my hard times. No words can describe how thankful I am. And I appreciate you in many ways. Thank you for being the most humble, kindness, caring and loving person I have ever known. Akash's memory will stay with us forever. I love you both so much and I wish I was there. Akash, thank you for letting me have a wonderful mom and a sister. I'm blessed with the past. Akash, I will forever remember you each day I live. Because you were such a good person with so much to give. Such a privilege to have known you and no one can deny. I love you and I miss you. Keep watching over us from heaven until that glorious morning when God comes to take us home. Go offer lahiyatu. After one year has gone by, it still feels unreal and unacceptable that I can no longer dial a cautious number, speak to him for hours on end about everything under the sun. Akash was extraordinarily kind and uncommonly generous. He was a loving son, a wonderful brother, and the best type of friend you could ever ask for. He was so talented in sports, in academics, public speaking, and he had one of the best senses of humor I've ever come across. He had a talent to make you feel confident about yourself just by being next to you or greeting you in the morning and really made your day. Akash and I became very close friends in year nine. He and I hit it off instantly, as most people tend to do with Akash because he's just a fun, loving guy. We became like siblings. And of course, with the sibling relationship, there was some rivalry. And this competition was very healthy for both of us as we both excelled in academics and in sports. I wasn't the most naturally confident person, and Akash was there to boost me. And this certainly helped my drive and gave me a real kickstart in the morning on the way to school. Akash was an incredible basketball player. Some of the shots I've seen him make on the court 
for Unreal. He'd give a lot of people their run for their money. He would tell anybody and everyone that he was playing with, I'll make a shot from some really far off position. And he would just throw the ball into the hoop without hitting the rims. It was switch every single time. This guy was unbelievable. Akash and I, as I said, were very competitive, not only in academics and sports, but it also came to a point that on the train ride home, we would bat at each other with the jokes and other types of humorous things to see who would break into laughter first. Naturally, Akash always won because he was just far too funny. And it wasn't jokes always. If the jokes didn't work, he would create these real funny facial expressions. Akash went to Avondale uh, the year after that, so I was without him. He had to head onwards, and it left a huge void in my life at school. And since then, everything was downhill. I didn't have the same motivation I did whilst he was with me in school. And it just was difficult not having a best friend around. And that's when I realized how important Akash was to me in my life. I used to eagerly look forward to the weekends to spend time with him. It would bring me a temporary peace. After school, and a few years later, Akash became uh, an airline pilot. And he started flying in Tonga and in Australia. He was thrown into the deep end on many occasions, but he was always adaptable. He learned to swim with the sharks. Akash was like a warm fire or a hot meal. He'd make you feel comfortable and at peace. On a day goes by where I don't wish he was here, he left us way too early. Someone like him, with that sense of humor, with his dependability, is severely lacking in a world that we live in today. But sometimes the Lord takes back his angels before we're ready to let them go. He's left behind a huge void. He's left behind a loving mother, an incredible sister, such a dependent brother-in-law. I hope that they have some semblance of hope and are able to move forward. My family and I, and I'm sure I speak for everyone here watching and listening, that will always be there to support Auntie Susan, Sneha, and Mario. We're all a phone call away. Akash is someone we can take inspiration from. He was thrown into difficult situations with difficult people. He never retaliated with aggression or anger. He always won people over with kindness and love. And in the world that we live in, we need more people like Akash. This next tribute is written by Gabriella Ratnaraja. She used to call Akash Akat, and that is how I will address him. Dear Akat, I felt like we had so much to say every time we met, but as I write this, I find it hard to find the right words, let alone any words to say. I love you, I miss you. I think about you every day. I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person today, but I'm out where I told you I'd be, and I will do the things we said we would. Akat, you will always be one of my forever best friends. I hope you are happy and well. I would do anything to see your cheeky smile again and just sit with you and drink hot chocolate and chat about everything and any little thing. Thank you for being you. Thank you for being my friend. Always loving and kind and true. I'm proud of you. I know when I look up into the sky, I'll see you, shining bright as you always did. Keep smiling and keep laughing, my dear friend. You are so loved. Love from Gabs.
I am standing here on behalf of uh, Mario. Before that, uh, Father Paul, who was a parish priest there in Tonga, he asked us to give this message on, on his behalf. Akash, indeed you brought to us part of the sky. We met in Tonga at the English-speaking Mass. Being the extrovert, he introduced himself with his wonderful smile. I was able to enjoy the person he was and spent time with him. Once I left Tonga, we communicated from time to time. So true that God takes the best. Now, Akash is with his father in heaven and his paternal father. Akash is always is in my heart until we meet in heaven. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and may perpetual light shine upon him. And uh, the words of Mario. It's been 12 months, but I am still struggling to come to terms with the fact that I am sitting here writing this. While we have slowly learned how to function normally again on the outside, the pain still remains very near and raw. While we try to see each new day as a gift from God, and we push ourselves to make the most of it, we still miss him incredibly. No matter what we do, there is an enormous void and a very real sense that something is always missing. People often say that time is the best healer, but in our experience, this is only a small part of a larger story. Time provides us with a space to come to terms with our new reality and to learn to cope with our loss. But the pain and the loss remains very real and very much the same. Time brings us those special people who drop everything and come to console us and to share our pain. And there are so many of you here with us today and watching online. We are incredibly grateful to you all. Time has allowed us to cross paths with others facing struggles who have shared their stories and experiences. To all those of you, thank you for being pillars of strength as we journey together. Time has also allowed us to better appreciate our faith and what it means to live up to Christ's call to take up the cross and follow him. In the depths of our anguish, the love, mercy and hope of God has been our deepest strength. Akash, bro, I still can believe, I, I still can't believe that you're gone. You were the brother-in-law that people would dream to have. In fact, you never liked the word in-law. You were a brother. In the time that I have known you, you did everything to make me feel welcome, free and feel supported. From the moment I met you, even though you didn't know me, you spoke so highly of me to everyone because you always saw the best in everyone and no one needed to earn your love. It was a relationship of freedom where we could be open and free with each other and make mistakes without having any worry of being judged. You trusted me with your struggles and gave me the freedom to advise you. You supported me and had my back as much as you had Sneha's and you never treated me differently. I miss how we used to gang up together and tease Sneha. I miss your jokes and your genuine care and concern. I will miss not having you around as Sneha and I build, up, build our family. And I will miss not having you in our lives as an example of someone with a simple and content heart who is truly non-judgmental, kind and so caring. With Sneha and Mum, 
and united with everyone here, we give thanks for the incredible gift you, are, you have been to each of our lives. We pray that you are now in the arms of your loving dad, in the home of your heavenly father, through the loving sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. You are always in our hearts, bro. There's not a moment where I don't miss you and feel the pain. Please watch over us. Watch over each of us from heaven. Sneha has also written a tribute for her brother, which I will read now. On behalf of Mum, Mario and myself, our sincere and heartfelt thanks to each one of you for being here today. Grief, in my experience, has been moments that are long and extremely painful, but years that have somehow passed by. I vividly remember the moment we lost Dad four years ago, the one whose lap I would still climb onto every time I needed comfort, who I ran to every time something went wrong, who always wound me up to get a reaction from me, who always told his doll how much he loved her, who could effortlessly fit in so many things into his day, whose heart just naturally loved everyone he met instantly and took on their burdens as his own, who would sacrifice all of himself to help the stranger and expect nothing. And the list goes on. I remember wailing on the hospital floor, wondering how I would cope without my rock and pillar. It was a then 24-year-old Akash who put his arms around me held me tight and said to me, Snehaka, don't worry, I will always be here for you. I love you very much. And he held me for the next three years in my pain. Daily calls from him, no matter where in the world he was, to make sure I was coping with the loss, finding ways to make me laugh, keeping in touch through the day with what we were up to to help the void, telling me he loves me and so much more. He played a pivotal part in the well-being of my marriage. He encouraged me not to worry about him and to ensure I put my husband first, always supported the both of us equally and somehow managed to join forces with my husband to gang up on me. The last days of his life and his suffering was an extreme agony. I don't know when I'll come to terms with it, but one precious memory I have of those nights is when he slept alongside my husband and me, and I got to hold him as my baby brother for these last moments. There is so much I could say about my relationship with both of them, but it's often said one of the legacies you leave behind is the people you have touched outside your family, and both of them seem to have done this in abundance. When I lost Dad, I heard stories from over a thousand people of everything he had done for them. To this day, so many tell me that they still feel his absence. We have heard from some of Akasha's friends here today, and I have heard many things of how he was a mini version of my father when it came to reaching out to people and touching their lives in his own small way. There is so much more I could say about both of them and all that people have said to me about them, but we are on a limited time, so I will say just this. They were both far from perfect. They were two very flawed individuals. However, their heart was one of genuine love, generosity, tolerance, acceptance, and non-judgment of all people from all different backgrounds. 
offending them was actually quite a difficult task. They did not care much for material things. Everyone they encountered became their friend instantly. They made everyone feel important. Words cannot describe how life has changed and the pain that we are enduring. Grief has taken its toll on physical health, mentally and emotionally. Normal daily tasks are a challenge. Life has become about surviving and learning to function while constantly feeling battered and overwhelmed with searing pain. The hurt, pain and loss has at times threatened to swallow me whole, but I think of what my father would say to me. God's grace is enough for you. Lean into him, even if it makes no sense, and take it one day at a time. He will remind me that this life is not infinite and will go by before any of us realize it. So to do my best to look forward with hope and prayers for a joyful reunion. He will tell me to do my best to continue to love people the best I can in my intense brokenness and to somehow find a purpose for my pain. I recently had the privilege to be able to take part in a mental health initiative and the only thing that kept me going in my immense sorrow was my beautiful brother and the hope that through his tragic loss, others may live. In all of this suffering, we as a family have also come to see the love of those around us. Thank you to those of Akash's friends who have reached out to the family in the last year and who check in on us. I have become close to some of you and I know that there is something that will make Akash smile because any opportunity he had, he had, he always wanted to introduce me to his friends. I still remember one incident where I was on my lunch break and I heard a voice shouting, Snehaka, Snehaka. I turned around and I see Akash running towards me, panting, saying, come, I want you to meet my friend. His friend told me that Akash spotted me from a distance and ran all the way towards me, telling him, I want you to meet my sister, man. Come with me. I like her to meet my friends. So thank you to those who have introduced themselves to me now that he no longer can. Thank you to those of you who have prayed for us, shared in our pain, reached out, visited, and looked out for mum helped with whatever we need. There are too many names to mention because so many of you have done so much for us. But I just specially want to thank my cousin Sweta for being my mum's backbone and my best friend Chapa who has gone above and beyond in her support for us. Thank you to the priests who have given their time to be here today. Thank you to the speakers and all who have organized today. And once again, thank you to all those who have supported Mum, Mario, and myself in so many ways. Because of your prayers and support, I have survived the days I did not think I could. Our sincere prayer for each of you is that God's grace will always be with you. Thank you again for being here. May God bless you all. You were right 
Thank you so much to all of you who have just sat there so patiently and so lovingly through the proceedings of these past two hours. As I sat there at the back listening to the speakers and your tributes to Brother Vancey and to, uh, and to our dear Akash, it drives home so eloquently. You spoke so eloquently of the deep loss that you have experienced and the impact that these two beautiful lives have had on your, uh, in your, in your lives. And I think and I believe that as you spoke, it was a reflection of how many of us feel, many of us think. And so I thank you for sharing all of the, your experiences with Brother Vancey and Akash with all of us. Susan Sneha and Mario have requested me to convey their deepest thanks to all of you. I've been requested not to mention any names because they'd be loath to leave any person out because each one of you is so important to them. So on be behalf of Susan Sneha and Mario, we'd like to thank Father Ben for opening CTK's doors and for celebrating Mass. Thank you also to Father Ephraim, Father Matthew and Father Val for taking the time to concelebrate the Mass. They also wish to thank all those who have kindly accepted their invitation to animate this evening's Mass. To those who did the readings, the prayers, for providing the sound system, for the beautiful singing that we just heard, the musicians, for, and for the live streaming. 
which has enabled family and friends around the world to join us virtually. They also extend their heartfelt thanks to all of the speakers for their eloquent tributes to Brother Vensi and for Akash in person, via video, and text. Your kind and loving words have touched the family deeply, and they are so thankful for your continued love and support. They've also requested to convey their deepest thanks to all the volunteers and DRCNZ for organizing and executing all that needed to be done for today's Memorial Mass. These volunteers have been working tirelessly behind the scene with planning and organizing for today. Last but not least, they thank all of you, each one of you, who've taken the time out of your Sunday to join the family in remembering and celebrating these two beautiful souls, our beloved Akash and Brother Vensi. The family have prepared a packed meal for all of you out in the foyer, so please take a packet before you leave, and there will be coffee and tea served as well. Thank you all, and God bless you mightily. Please stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and celebrate life in the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 